Okay, in this video we're gonna look at an important result from group theory called Cayley's theorem, and it's corollary in some examples. So it's actually gonna have a pretty short proof, and so that'll give us plenty of time to look at some cool examples. So Cayley's theorem says the following, every group is isomorphic to a permutation group. So recall, a permutation group is a group of permutations on a set, and a permutation on a set is just a bijection from that set to itself. So what this says is that each group is isomorphic to a group made up of bijections of a set. Okay, good. And then the corollary says that if G is a finite group, so let's say it has order N, then there's a subgroup H of the symmetric group on N letters such that G is isomorphic to H. Okay, good. So let's look at the proof of this theorem first. And we'll start as follows. So uh, let's say we have a little G in big G and we want to define the following map. So we'll call it lambda g, and it goes from the group to itself, and it's going to be defined in the following way. Lambda g evaluated at x is g times x. Okay, good. So this is not a homomorphism or anything, but it will be a bijection, and so let's make that claim that lambda g is a bijection. In other words, lambda g is an element of the symmetric group of the set which underlies the group itself, so recall we called that Sg. Okay, good. So we first need to show that this thing is injective. So let's suppose that lambda g x equals lambda g of y, but now notice that that tells us that g times x equals g times y, which tells us that x equals y just by left cancellation within the group. Now uh, let's show that this thing is surjective. So let's suppose that y is an element of the group and we want to find uh, some pre-image for y and that's actually not too hard. So let's notice that if we take lambda g and we plug in g inverse times y, we're going to get g g inverse times y which equals y. So we found a pre-image for this element. Good. So that tells us this, this lambda g is a bijection. In other words, it's a permutation on the set that's underlying this group. Okay, good. I'll clean up the board and then we'll show that this um, will induce some sort of homomorphism. Okay, so the next thing we want to show is that the set of all of these lambda g's uh, actually forms a group. So let's say that h is equal to all of these lambda g's uh, where we're taking g to run over all of g. And then our group operation here is composition. And so our claim in this case is that this h is a group. Okay. Good. So maybe the first thing we need to check is that there is an identity. Great. And what we'll claim is that lambda sub e is the identity. So let's notice that lambda sub g composed with lambda sub e evaluated on any element of the group is equal to g times e times that element of the group, which is g times x, which is lambda g evaluated at x. But now notice what that tells us is that since lambda g composed with lambda e evaluated at x equals lambda g evaluated at x, and x was arbitrary, that tells us that lambda g composed with lambda e is equal to lambda g. So in other words, this lambda e is playing the role of the identity because it didn't change this function at all. And we could check that uh, uh, from left multiplication in the same way. So we have an identity. In other words, our identity in this case is this lambda e. So uh, now the next thing we need to show is that there are inverses. 
and that'll be pretty similar. So uh, let's notice that if we do lambda g composed with lambda g inverse evaluated at x, that's going to give us g g inverse times x, which is equal to x, which is equal to lambda e evaluated at x. But now since x was arbitrary, we have lambda g composed with lambda g inverse um, equals lambda e. In other words, what we have in this case is that lambda g inverse equals lambda g inverse. So the inverse of this bijection is given by the function lambda g inverse. Okay. Good. So identity inverses, I mean, there are some other things to check, but I'll let you guys check those. They're not too hard. So associativity is super easy to check, and that's built off of the fact that composition of functions is like by definition associative. Maybe uh, closure is also pretty easy to check, and then we're essentially done. Okay, so that means we have H is a group. Now we want to show, show that this group H is indeed isomorphic to our original group G. Okay, so to finish this proof off, we want to show that G is isomorphic to this group that we've just constructed H. Um, and so here we'll consider the following map phi from g to h given by phi of g equals lambda sub g. Okay, good. And so the first thing we need to check is this group law. In other words, our uh, multiplication on the left-hand side is equal to our multiplication on the right-hand side. So let's look at uh, phi of uh, g h. So notice that's going to be a lambda sub g h by definition. But now we have a function over here and we want to show that that function is equal to the composition of lambda g with lambda h. But the only way to do that is to look at what this function does to an element from its domain. So now let's notice that lambda sub g h evaluated at x is g h times x, but that's equal to lambda g composed with lambda h evaluated at x, um, but that's exactly equal to phi of g times phi of h evaluated at x. Okay, good. But now what that tells us is that phi of g h equals phi of g phi of h. Now the important thing here is that we showed that this uh, lambda g h was equal to lambda g composed with lambda h by passing an element from the domain through it because those are functions. Okay, so the group law is satisfied. Now let's check that it's injective and in fact that's the last thing we need to check. We don't need to check it's surjective just because of how h is defined. It's defined in a way that it will immediately be surjective. So now let's suppose that phi of g equals phi of h. So what that tells us is the function lambda g equals the function lambda h. But two functions are the same if they agree on every element of their domain. So that means lambda g uh, evaluated at x equals lambda h evaluated at x for all x in the group. Right? Good. Now, in particular, this has got to be true for x equal to the identity. But notice that lambda g of the identity equals g and lambda h of the identity equals h. So we get g equals h, which is exactly what we need to have in order to show that this thing is injective. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at an example. Okay, so for our first example, we'll look at the group Z3. Great. And now notice that uh, S sub Z3 in this case will be um, all permutations from the set that underlines Z3, so that's 0, 1, and 2, up to 
itself, so 0, 1, and 2. So notice that's a nice copy of S3. Okay, good. So now let's uh, see what this does. So um, if we have phi going from Z3 up to uh, this thing which we called H before, which is going to be lambda G where G is an element of Z3. So let's see what those guys are. Okay, so lambda zero is uh, given in the following way. So that's going to be a map from Z3 to Z3 where we add by zero. So in other words, it's defined by lambda of zero, evaluated at x is x plus zero. Okay, good. But then as x can take on every number from z3, notice that's going to give us the permutation. Uh, zero goes to zero, one goes to one, two goes to two. In other words, the identity permutation. So this is the identity, which generally we write with parentheses one, but since we're pushing this down a little bit, this would be like parentheses zero, if you will. Okay, so now let's look at lambda 1. So that's going to be a map from Z3 to Z3. And lambda 1 of X is going, going to be given by X plus 1. And this is working mod 3. Good. So that means this is going to take 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and 2 to 2 plus 1, which is 0 mod 3. Good. So that's going to be equal to a three cycle. And so that three cycle is going to be zero, one, two. Good. So we're recall by cycle notation, this means zero is sent to one, one is sent to two, and two is sent back to zero. Okay, good. Now let's look at lambda two, and that's going to be the last one. So that'll take Z3 to Z3, and then we have lambda one sorry, lambda 2 evaluated at x is going to give us x plus 2. So that's going to give us the permutation defined by 0 goes to 2, 1 goes to 0, and 2 goes to 2 plus 2, which is 4, which is 1. Okay, good. So now notice that is the permutation 0, 2, 1 that we can write in uh, cycle notation in the following way. Okay, good. So now notice we have three elements, which are permutations in S3, where we've actually just kind of renamed. Um, instead of taking 1, 2, 3, we're taking uh, 0, 1, 2, but that's okay. And so here we get that this is equal to the following group of permutations. We have the identity, which we'll call just 0, 0, 1, 2, and 0, 2, 1. And notice that is a subgroup of S3. Okay, good. I think this is a good place to end the video. We'll maybe look at another bigger example in another video.